An NPR editor now suspended without pay for calling out the bias and lack of viewpoint diversity at NPR. At one point, I got so frustrated with what I saw was the sort of the lack of different perspectives in our coverage that I decided to look at voter registration. 87 registered Democrats on our editorial staff, zero Republicans. I presented this at a at a all hands or a large news meeting, and I said, "Hey, look, something's gone wrong here." No kidding. Somebody who knows that is professor at George Washington University Law School and Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley. Jonathan, good morning to you. Thank you, Steve. So uh, Yuri got in trouble because apparently he didn't ask the boss, "Hey, can I write this thing that uh, spills the beans on how, what lefties we are?" Right, it's an ironic moment. He said, look, there's no viewpoint uh, tolerance at NPR, and he said that publicly, and so they suspended him. Uh, but, you know, the, the larger problem here is that he was really articulating something many of us have written for years, that NPR has radically changed. And many people had hoped that the new CEO would be an opportunity to bring in someone that was a traditional journalist, someone who would say, look, we need to tack towards the middle, uh, particularly because we're a publicly supported right. media organization. Instead, they picked someone who was pretty far left and fairly activist, and the situation has gotten even worse. And she basically responded by saying, go pound sand. We're not going right. to change a thing. Yeah, no kidding. Why does NPR need federal funding? I mean, MSNBC doesn't need federal funding. They're doing just fine. Yeah, that's the real question, Steve, is I don't think it matters what the slander bias is. Most of us see a very heavy slant at NPR. But the issue is really, should we have a state-funded media at all? Right. I mean, the distinction between MSNBC's view and NPR is really non-existent. I mean, they're both basically coming from the same place, but only one's getting a subsidy. And many of the people at NPR would be outraged if there was a subsidy going, for example, to Fox Radio or some sure. other organization. And so the question we have as a country is, do we need to look at this and say that NPR needs to survive on its own and that the state shouldn't be able to pick between, the government should, be, should not be able to pick between different media outlets that they like? Right. And I think that's a good debate that we haven't had really substantively uh, in a very long time. Especially since uh, public broadcasting gets hundreds of millions of dollars. Going forward, maybe that will be a discussion. In the meantime, uh, at the top of the show, we showed this video that a Google employee is apparently unhappy with the fact that Google has got contracts with uh, the country of Israel, and they, they, they had a sit-in yesterday uh, in New York and in Sunnyvale at the CEO's office. Watch this. Google, Google, you can't hide. No, Google, Google, you can't hide. Okay, those aren't people in front of the building who don't work at Google. Those are people who work at Google calling out their bosses. What's going to happen to them, Jonathan? Well, this is part of the rather perverse universe we find ourselves in. They're Google. Their employees have the company. Uh, most of us would not try to sit in with right. one's boss. Uh, it's, it's generally not a good thing to move ahead. Maybe it is at Google. But there's a sense of entitlement here. Uh, there's also this idea that it's all free speech, that uh, disrupting others, preventing others from speaking, or occupying your boss's office is all part of my entitlement of free speech. That's not the case. You'll find no one with a broader, more robust view of free speech than, than myself. But free speech does not include disrupting others from speaking. It also doesn't include taking a salary and going in and stopping your business uh, because you have a few mm -hmm. things you want to get off your chest. Sure. Jonathan, what would happen if you walked into the law school dean who you work for there at the university in D.C. and just had, you brought a bunch of people and just started yelling about them. Something tells me it would not go over well, <laughs> I, but I, 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 I'm not too sure I'll be trying that anytime soon. I would caution people that this is not a resume plus. Right. Well put. All right, uh, Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us from D.C. Stay out of the dean's office. Thanks, Steve.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.